Hi folks, welcome back to the shop. Today I just want to talk a little bit about Milwaukee's M18 LED searchlight. You'll see the model number is 2354-20. Of course, the dash 20 means that it's tool only, so there's no charger or batteries included in this light. Uh, if we look at the back here real quick, I just want to check out some of the specs. This light can give a beam distance according to Milwaukee of about 700 yards. Uh, it has uh, four different light modes. Uh, you can get, you can have strobe, spotlight, floodlight, and then you have flood and spotlight combined. It has 198 degrees of rotation. We'll illustrate that here uh, in a little bit. Uh, <clears throat> if you look here, it has a IP54 rating for water and dust resistance, rated at 1250 lumens. Now that is, that's when it's uh, when the uh, Floodlight mode. Spotlight, interestingly enough, only is 600 lumens. Um, so this is this is the combination of both flood and spot, and this is just flood. So you can see flood consumes a lot of current, and we'll talk about that a little bit too. So anyway, just wanted to go over some of these specs real quick. So we have the uh, here's the light. We'll go around it here real quick. Now this light uh, it weighs about three pounds, uh, and it's. You know, pretty, you can feel that, right? All, all the weight pretty much is in the head of this light. You can see there's some heat sinks in here uh, that visible through the, uh, the openings that, you know, I'm sure that adds a lot to the weight. If we look at the front of this light, you can see we've got some LEDs here. Uh, in the side is the spotlight. Uh, it's got its own reflector and cone. I don't know if you can see down in there or not, but and it's pretty deep, pretty much the depth of this uh, housing. It's got uh, four LEDs on the outside. These are for the floodlight. So it can either, you can either put the mode in flood or spotlight. Mode switch is here. Uh, you can change to those four different modes I talked about. If you hold it down, it'll go into strobe. Otherwise, you just you tap through the modes. And of course, you can turn it on and off. Now, what I like about this is whatever mode you set it on, when you turn it off, it's going to stay in that mode. So that's, uh, that's what makes that nice. It's got a lanyard uh, a hook here, and it's got another place for a lanyard here. So I suppose you could, you could loop one over the tool for your hand, or you could just have a lanyard attached just to one of those locations. Just to kind of a look around the light, you can see that on this side it, it has a flat surface here and it has a keyhole here to hang on the wall. So you could, you could set it on a wall and slide it down uh, on a screw head or something to, uh, to get that mounted. So it's nice that it's wall mountable. I don't know that I, I would not probably mount this You'd have to have a battery on it, I think, if you wall mount it, because otherwise it's sort of top heavy, and I think it would want to, you, you know, you put it on the hook, or however you mount it, it's going to want to spin and fall over, I believe. So I think you'd want to have a battery on there at all times. It's one thing to note if you're planning on hanging this light up. But just look a little bit here at the at the little different view here of the 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 height of the of the light. It's it's pretty pretty big um, light, and of course, like I said, Milwaukee they refer to this as the M18. Uh, Searchlight. Now the head does articulate, as you can see here, 198 degrees according to Milwaukee. Right? We go down. If we want to, bring it can articulate all the way back over, and down this other side. And what's sort of interesting about that to me is that you can see it points down when you uh, put it in its final position there. So it's not just right at, you know, 90 degrees because that's good because if you're working on something and you set this light down you know, the light is pointing downward towards the work. So I really feel like Milwaukee may have missed a marketing opportunity with this light. They call it the M18 searchlight, LED searchlight. And I think that's, uh, I've kind of overlooked this light for years because of that. Because I, when you hear searchlight, you think, well, okay, this light, you know, is for search and rescue. And, you know, when I have those thoughts, I just kind of walk by the light in the store, didn't think much of it. But the fact that you can switch to a floodlight, I think is something that, makes it pretty handy. You know, you could take this light, I'll pop the battery in here real quick. Just got one of the compact batteries in here. You can set it down on the battery, position the light down, and the fact that you can do that and put this light into flood mode, you know, it, it gives it a lot more use than, you know, you could conceivably replace the, uh, the Milwaukee rocket light with it. You know, articulate the head up. If you're trying to uh, work on something, the fact you can switch out of a, a spotlight mode you know, we'll look at the modes here real quick. There is the spotlight mode there. If I push the button again, it goes to the beam mode, right? So we get the, the long throw beam 
uh, that the, up the light's known for, of course. And then we hit it again and we get both, which is kind of interesting. You get flood and the beam together. Um, and of course, one more time, we're back to flood. But the fact you can do a floodlight with this, to me, gives this light a lot of different uh, uh, potential. Uh, you know, you can put it in this position and mount it to work somewhere. You can set it down on its base here and put it, you know, on the on a you know truck tailgate or, or wherever you're trying to mount it out. Set it down, articulate the light where you need it, pointing down, pointing up. So, really think this could serve well as a work light and conceivably be used instead of one of the other Milwaukee work lights. So. I do think that's sort of a kind of a misnomer maybe with this particular light. Now, for comparison purposes, I want to show the uh, DeWalt, their 20 volt work light, just to give a feel for some details about the size of this light. So you can see here, I'm going to set the DeWalt right beside it. Let me pop the battery back off of here. And you can see that the size difference there in length, I'll stand them up. Maybe that'll show here a little bit better what we're looking at. Push them out here. Can we come back in? Where's the best place there, guys? I'll come up a little bit so you can see the tops. So, as you can see, that the wall light's actually taller, stands a little bit taller than the uh, the uh, the Milwaukee light. So you get an idea of the side profile there, and see uh, you know the difference in the size. As I said earlier, the Milwaukee, I think I said it was three pounds. Uh, the DeWalt is about half as light, half, half the weight. So this one's about one and a half pounds. So uh, you can, this light feels very light. And I think, you, you know, you're, you're going to be operating this, this DeWalt in this mode pretty much all the time, right? Um, so I think in this mode, it feels very good, very balanced. Uh, the DeWalt has uh, four LEDs on the front, right? So you have each one of these LEDs light up. Uh, it has a bright, it's, it's a lot like their other stick or work light in that it has a bright mode when you first hit the trigger. If you hit it again, it dims down and you hit the trigger again, it turns off. Uh, so I think they've updated this light. I noticed that it has here where the battery goes, if you can see there, uh, uh, 2022-01-TW. I think this is a little different than the previous versions. They, I'm not sure when they did the update, but some of their lights like this have a red LED here. This one's not red. These all light up uh, as regular LEDs. And this is a cool white light. That's the thing with, uh, one of the things with this searchlight I've noticed was when you turn this light on, I, I first turned it on and thought I'd be sort of blown away with the light. Uh, and I, I just wasn't quite blown away. I mean, it had a great throw. I could see in the distance, but I think that's because it's about a 4,000 K light. Milwaukee has their true view, uh, light type that they like to uh, market and talk about, which is supposed to be a more accurate reflection of color. So you can see wire harnesses better, for example, and, and know accurately what the colors are. I think that, uh, you know, they're, they're committed to that, that temperature of light. Um, now this one puts out, the spotlight puts out 600 lumens on this light, as we saw there on the packaging. The DeWalt, by comparison, it outputs 1,500 lumens on high and 500 lumens on low. Uh, now, one of the things I wanted to show here, I, I'm going to hopefully I can illustrate sort of the um, the consumption of power on these two lights, which I also think is kind of interesting. So we have these two lights here. Bear with me here as I try to show all of this. All right, so if we look at the, we'll first look at the Milwaukee. Now I have a Milwaukee battery here and I have a, a voltmeter hooked up. We're gonna get our power from a 20 volt Milwaukee battery. And we're going to show here uh, the current draw of these lights. Of course, zero current draw right now while it's off. So I turn on the Milwaukee searchlight and you can see that the spotlight pulls 620 milliamps, uh, kind of a low mode. So when I turn the mode up, now it jumps up to an amp. It actually draws an amp when you turn on the floodlight and the spotlight. And what's interesting to me is when you just go strictly floodlight, when I do that, it pulls even more, just a slightly more pull uh, when the spotlight goes off. So, so you're pulling roughly an amp you know, a little over a half amp when you have the spotlight on, and when you go into flood mode, you're pulling over an amp. So that's what we get with the Milwaukee light. So let's just see how, and we can also get a feel for, for the color temp as well while we're doing this for the DeWalt. Let's just see what this guy's doing here. 
So we turn on the DeWalt. What's the draw? It's showing us uh, it's drawing an amp. Let's reset that again here. Just see here, we try that again. That's interesting, it showed an amp. Now it's showing uh, 557 milliamps. Uh, that's it's interesting to me. So as you can see, it draws less current than the uh, uh, the Milwaukee light. And you can see here it has a much, it has a cool white uh, LED uh, uh, color temp from the light itself. And if I put on the dim setting, you can see it takes about 376 milliamps. So it draws less, uh, less current. Uh, you know, it's fair to say that basically on high you're drawing, uh, it, 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 on the spotlight for both of them draws about the same power, right? What do we say here? Just a little over half an amp or about 600 plus milliamps with this, about 500, yeah, a little over 500 milliamps uh, with the DeWalt. So they're pretty close in terms of the how much the current the spotlights draw on both of these. It's the floodlight on here that draws an amp of current on the, uh, on the Milwaukee light. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Also interesting, as you saw in the video there, <laughs> it showed uh, one amp there initially. It's funny because it's done that before to me one time when I was testing, but I couldn't replicate it. Typically it shows, there we are back to 500 milliamps. Just wanted to look at that again to see if uh, we can replicate that outcome. Sometimes I think that's just a misreading there. Uh, I have tested with more than one meter, so I've consistently got about 500. Yeah, 550, so, so about half an amp uh, uh, with this light. So um, anyway, just a quick comparison of these two lights. I hadn't really, you know, I, I have some work lights, of course, and hadn't really been looking at uh, spotlights, but we've had uh, uh, some issues recently where we needed a spotlight to deal with some wildlife. And uh, so I started looking into these uh, products and, and, and checked out these two lights. So as you can see there, like I said with the DeWalt, it's definitely that cool white, LED uh, and uh, higher lumen output, you know, that doesn't always translate into a, four, a longer beam distance. This one's uh, rated to be about a 500 yard uh, beam distance out of this light, uh, whereas you're, you, this one's rated at 700 yards. So 500 and 700 yards, the Milwaukee should give you a, a longer beam uh, distance uh, when you're using these lights. But like I said before, I think this one's been updated. So it's interesting to see those uh, at some point in recent history to see it updated, which, and I think those updates are good. Uh, anyway, that's, uh, I guess what else we could talk a little bit else about the DeWalt. There is a lanyard hook here uh, for the DeWalt light. You can see that it has one on each end of the handle as well. It only goes, of course, 90 degrees, right? So it points straight up and which of course doesn't matter. You can you know, turn the right light around if you want to go 90 degrees in the other direction. It does, like I said earlier, it does feel very balanced. It doesn't point down though. Notice that this, this light, if you set it on its base, it doesn't point slightly downward, you know, towards whatever you're working on. So it does have a, a hook here. I suppose you could hook and hang this light if you wanted to. Uh, and again, it's about half the weight of that light, uh, of the Milwaukee light. It does feel, uh, it does feel good in the hand, good and balanced. Uh, they both have a bezel edged here, so if you set these lights down on the lens, you know, the lens itself isn't going to come in contact with the surface. It has a rubber overmold here. Uh, feels very, uh, I think it's nice where that location is. It's protected uh, on the uh, Milwaukee by comparison. This is not a rubber overmold. It's sort of a hard plastic. Uh, at first blush, I thought it was, uh, you know, rubber overmold just like the handle, but it's, it's not. But anyhow, I think both, I think, are really great lights if you're in the market for a spotlight. Uh, I think uh, you really, uh, it's gonna come down to which battery you have, you know. Uh, unfortunately, you know, you have all these 20 volt tool batteries that, you know, they, they, they have the same power and they could power the same tools, but of course you have to, they're, they're set up to run on different uh, uh, platforms. So that's, uh, unfortunately, it's probably gonna be driven by which, which particular platform you already have power tools on. Now, one thing I like about getting a spotlight and, and using this type of, uh, using a tool company's uh, spotlight is that I think, you know, this reminds me of something I've seen in an industrial setting where you can mount this on a wall, right? You know, you may have seen lights like this out there in your work. When you set this down, you know, you set this on a wall, like I've seen an industrial setting where they have a charger mounted on the wall and, 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 and this a light like this will be mounted up into the charger. So it's getting a charge all the time. It's got older cell technology. I'm sure that forms cell memory or the battery's just uh, 
went bad over the years. But I remember, you know, pulling one of these lights off the wall out of the charger, thinking, oh, great, I can use this light, needed it in one scenario, and the, and the battery was shot. So it, it sort of reminds me of those. But the great thing is you have these tool batteries that you have readily available. And, and by the way, I did try, this is one of the compact batteries. You know, I like to put that on here because it makes the light, you know, lighter and it's not quite as heavy to carry. I did try one of the Milwaukee um, high output batteries. I'll just show that here real quick if I can uh, for reference. But I did try a high output battery and it doesn't make a difference. In some power tools, you will get more output from Milwaukee with the high output batteries because they have larger individual cells in them. But with this, it didn't make any difference. So unless you're looking for runtime, you know, I would just run the compact battery and I think you'll be uh, good to go. But yeah, with that, just wanted to talk briefly here about a couple of different spotlight choices and particularly, you know, discuss the, the Milwaukee light and, and the fact that it really, <laughs> I think it's really mismarketed. It should be marketed as a, as a work light. It's much easier to justify the expense if you're using these for, for work, because uh, you might not be in, in, you know, needing the searchlight uh, um, as uh, frequently as you might need a work light. You know, a spotlight is something where, you know, blind you in, a, in close quarters, but I think they're both an excellent way to go if you're looking to, uh, uh, to get that, that long throw of a beam. Uh, you know, if you buy, I mentioned that light in industrial setting earlier, I also wanted to tell you that, you know, if you go out to Amazon, you're looking for a light you're going to find uh, lots of different options out there for a spotlight, but you know they come with their own, you know, lithium 18650 batteries, and there's probably multiple batteries in those lights, right? I know there is, and when you get them, you know, you can't just switch out the batteries on those items like you can the tool batteries. You know, you take something like this Milwaukee battery here, you've got five 18650 cells in here all laid down beside of each other. And if you need to switch it out and pop another battery on, hey, you pop it off, grab another one, you're good to go. So that really makes it appealing to try to make use of your power tool chargers and, and, and 18650 batteries that you already have versus going out and buying another company's spotlight where you have to charge with you know micro USB or whatever mechanism they have, you're getting the benefit of using your power tool batteries here that, that you already have access to. Um, so it is very appealing, I think, to, to make use of these power tool companies' lights. That's really why you know, I look into them. And uh, I think a lot of folks you know, go that path or go that route because it's just a great way to get a good power source uh, for something that, that does require a good bit of power to run. Um, and you're, you, know, you already have the system set up. So with that said, just a quick talk about uh, some different uh, options here for, for spotlights and work lights. And uh, if you please uh, like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next video.